Hello and welcome to CineTracer 2 version 0.6.1. In this update, we have made some changes to the building system. And in this video, we're going to cover how to build a simple set and give it materials so that we end up with something like this. So let's start a new project and give it a name. Project Living Room, something like that. We're going to choose stage A, which is the newest building stage. It's basically a big empty building and we're going to create project. So here we are in stage A. We can see that it's a big empty room and this is going to give us plenty of room to build um, a small to medium set. I'm going to hit E to go to editor and then I'm going to hit tab to go into our inventory. We're going to be working with the building tab and the props tab, um, which existed last time, but there are some new changes here. Let's start with our floor piece here and it's stuck to our mouse and doing a little bit of snapping and we're just going to left click to place it down. What we'll see that's new here is that we have some building parameters, which for now are just these two material slots, one for the floor and one for the bottom of this, which is the ceiling. We're going to click on the floor and we're going to have two modes that we can put the material slot into. If we turn up the saturation here, we can see that we can change the color of the floor and this will do uh, in most cases if you just get the color right uh, to match the set that you want to build that you're going to build that is in the location if we don't have the texture which we'll see in a second to match it we can just use color so for instance if we were going to try to make this wood um, we could do something like this and it takes a little bit of time to finesse it and find it but something like this could be wood but uh, in case we want to go a little bit more realistic, we can change the mode to texture. And in this case, we have a selection of textures uh, usually used for ArcViz. In this case, I'm going to check take this wood floor. And for now, this is pretty much done. I'm going to hit tab again, and we're going to take out one of our wall pieces. This wall piece is about a quarter of the size of this floor. So it's going to take four of these to build a full wall. Uh, with the new snapping system right out of the spawning, uh, they will just snap right together. However, if you place the object um, out here, if you use the gizmo, it's going to also snap. And if you use the little yellow circle like this, it will also snap. So this system is designed to snap together. So something I want to point out that's different from Cinetracer 1 is that if we want to change the material on all of the walls, we can select all of them at once, do this, and then pick a texture. I'm going to go with um, the white bricks here. And if we want a quick way of deselecting, you can do this. That's the slow way, actually. But for now, the quickest way to deselect would be to just hit E, go back to first person, and then go back to editor. That's, the, that's my recommendation for now. We're going to finish up with the return wall here, and we're going to use this rather uh, dressed wall. And we want to roughly place it here. And the idea is that it is um, pretty much flush with this uh, single floor piece, though you can do whatever you want. And that this is roughly the correct placement um, if you really want to do it like strictly. It's like half off the floor. Um, so in this case, this one's going to have a lot more material slots, but we're going to click this. We're going to go to bricks and you will see that we have a whole lot more and I'm just going to kind of fly through it. Uh, we're going to make that wood down there. We're going to do the curtains just a color for now to start. Uh, we'll just make them dark and then you can continue to style out each um, pillow and the seats here, but I'm going to leave it at this for now. So next, let's look at adding some cabinets. This is uh, kind of the other part of this. And these are, as you'd expect, pretty much just cubes and they will snap uh, perfectly against the wall. I'm gonna use that one. Then I'm gonna use this sink. So what I wanna point out now is that if we have cabinets that are meant to go on the wall, which are these two, when you take them out, you'll see that they kind of snap to the floor, they snap to the ceiling. That's because these are meant to go on the wall. Uh, they will snap to the side of the wall and if you put it down and then grab the yellow circle it will still have this behavior so this makes placing things on the wall just a little bit easier we're going to be able to take this um, cabinet with a microwave and just put it right immediately on the wall and again if you grab the little uh, yellow circle you'll be able to um, freely place it around and it's going to orient for you so um, 
What I want to talk about now is the building parameters, specifically the materials. You'll see that this one has cabinets and hardware. This one has cabinets, hardware, and a microwave in it. A block out of it, anyway. This one has a cabinet, a countertop, and then hardware. This one has cabinet, countertop, hardware, sink. And what happens is if you multi-select um, all these cabinets, it's going to basically choose, show you the slots of the first thing you select. So if I choose this, and then I choose the one next to it, um, I'm seeing the parameters of the first thing selected. And so if I change this here, uh, it's going to change both of the first parameters of the object. So sometimes they line up, sometimes they don't. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing up here. Um, for all the cabinets, so the first parameter is cabinet, so that would have been fine. And I'm just going to loosely match it. Uh, we could have typed in the actual value there. So we're going for a slightly darker look here. I'm going to take these two again. We're going to go to the countertop, and I have one marble material. I am going to make the textures match eventually here. Um, this is our one marble material. And then for the sink, we have a metal material that I'm going to use uh, this one. We also have like a full chrome. Uh, the reflections are a little crazy in there sometimes, but I'm going to go with this. And then let's see. So I'm also going to change the hardware to chrome and then change the hardware to chrome. And then up here, I think hardware is second for both of them. So if we change both of them at the same time, uh, we have that. And finally, for microwave, I'm just going to make it black and I'll have like a, a more modeled out one eventually like this. So I'm just going to keep styling out this uh, little living room and I'm going to take out a desk, flip it around by scrolling the mouse wheel and just place it right against the wall. You'll see that this one doesn't really snap to the wall like the counters do. But if we go to wall dressing, these objects do. So these are shelves. They're meant to go on the wall. You see that's like on the floor and it has this subtly different behavior that makes placing things on the wall uh, a little bit easier. So I'll go for a slightly different layout than the demo. We'll just do three of these maybe. And um, if you grab all three and you grab the little um, yellow sphere, you'll see that it'll actually flip around to the, to the wall you want. And we'll just place it here. And with them all being the same object, this is the best for multi Like We could change all of the brackets to be darker, which is uh, one of the looks that happens in real life. And um, let's see, I'm going to make this desk just one of these woods here. And um, I think that's pretty good for now. Uh, what I want to show next is if you use something uh, from dressing like this small prop here, you have some new ones, that this is snapping. And it's maybe a little bit too coarse, the snapping. So I'm going to put it down here. And what you can do is turn off location snapping. So now if I grab the little orange or yellow sphere, that it's like a free place movement. So that might be good uh, when you're placing small things where like the snapping system isn't really helping you. Um, but it should help for placing walls, floors, and pretty much everything else. But sometimes you need to go and turn that off. Uh, we might then go grab one of our only uh, props for like the kitchens. There's like a little coffee maker. And you can assign it textures as well. But for now, we'll leave that alone. Uh, I am going to turn snapping back on and then grab a desk chair for the desk. We'll put that there. And then I will grab some plants. I'm going to put one here. And if we can fit... I'm going to put one here. This one's like the bigger fern, if I remember correctly. It's a little unwieldy. Uh, that one's a little big, I think. Maybe I'll just do the same one again. We'll just like spin it around. So uh, there we go. We're, we're between two ferns now. So if we select both of these, uh, we'll see that the pot is both. They're white. Uh, but you'll see here that you cannot change the texture of the plants. Uh, plants are kind of special the way that they work. So changing materials on them doesn't really work out too well. You would uh, kind of lose the shape of it. It would look very blocky. But very quickly, we can sort of art direct the pots themselves. I'm going to make them kind of dark gray. And then the soil, um, we don't have a soil texture. That would probably be the best. But we can do something a little bit towards orange and kind of darker. And maybe a little bit lower set. And so roughly that uh, could be soil. Uh, so we're moving right along here. Let's just finish up a little bit of uh, foreground objects. And of course, this is up to you and what your set looks like. I'm just kind of making a bit of a demo. Uh, we'll put this table down. Um, I think this is the bigger one, actually. I'm going to go with the bigger one. 
Um, let's delete this one, grabbing the little yellow sphere. And we're just gonna throw down a couple seats and then we're gonna apply some materials to them. And we will uh, be able to add a couple lights and show you something special about this curtain. So let's grab these and just kind of, oops, I could have grabbed the floor. We're gonna just scoot them in. And uh, let's do two more here like this. And we have our table setting. So I'm gonna just grab these chairs and um, again, all at once change the materials to wood. I'm gonna hit E to deselect, E back. And cause I'm uncreative right now, I'm just gonna also make this wood. Uh, one other prop that's fun uh, is this carpet. So I'm gonna put it on the floor here, drag it in and uh, for time, we do have some fabric materials. They're not very good right now. They're kind of tech tests um, for, for assembling them uh, in the game now, but we could have the carpet be green. That is, that is certainly a decision. Um, and then once this textile is decided, I'm gonna then also fly over here and then apply that same green to the chair. I can then apply the same green um, to the seat, for instance, like that. And we made the pillows apparently bricks, which I didn't mean to do. And so we have some sort of continuity uh, design here and you can keep going through and playing with the materials. So what if you wanna put light through this window is sort of the next question. Um, that's not gonna go very well with the black curtain. And I'll illustrate that right now. The light for now to do this is going to be this frame light. It does default cyan. That probably shouldn't be right now, but that's how it comes in. And I'm just going to scoot it down a little bit and just turn off its saturation. And uh, I can actually turn off its dimmer too. So what you'll see, it's just a big white image, um, but there is no light coming through that window. How are we supposed to get light through this window? Well, we can make the curtain shears. So we're gonna go to curtain and there's one specific material for this as this UI evolves. And it is all the way at the bottom to this one right here. And it is a transparent sort of backlit diffusion material and it's gonna allow light to come through that window. So right now this is sort of like an open, um, no ceiling design, which is fine for a set. But if we want this to look more like a location, we're gonna need a roof and we can really see um, Lumen and Unreal Engine 5 doing uh, its work there and letting the light bounce around. So we're gonna grab uh, another floor, which is also a ceiling. We can put it there actually, and just get it in place here. And the idea with it is to kind of half interlock it into the wall like this. You'll see that it's like half in the wall uh, from both sides. If you want it to be like um, how it's been designed, you can, you can do whatever if it's working for your set, but it's supposed to be about halfway in the wall. And then we can raise this um, to be whatever height uh, looks best for your, uh, your scene in your shop. Uh, to finish this up though, let's add an actor. Is this who we were using in the in the first shot? I don't remember, but I'm gonna place her here. And then we're gonna just use one light. Uh, right now, light stands are a little bit broken, so I would recommend not using them for now. And we're just gonna do it uh, floating light style. We'll put that here. And we're just gonna drag it up in the air. We're gonna put a soft box on it, this one. And dim it down a bit, tilt, a little bit of pan to kind of get it off the wall a tiny bit. And we'll just turn it up a little bit here. They're not metahumans. They're a little bit harder to tell if they're being lit correctly. Still looks, this looks a tiny bit bright. Turn it down like that. Uh, let's take out a camera and we'll place it here and then we'll frame up a similar shot uh, from the intro. We're gonna go in, uh, I'm gonna hit, well, I'm gonna just bring this down to 100 ISO. I'm gonna hit tab to hide the UI so I can kind of see what's going on. I'm gonna left click her scoot around and try to frame up some sort of wide shot. This is not bad. Start here and say we like this wide shot. Look at this set. We're going to hit enter and we've created a screenshot. Um, then we can hit tab and leave the camera. If we would like to make a little bit of a camera move, we can open up our shot list, add a shot. At this point, you do not want to move anything. You don't want to add anything that will not go super well, or it's going to animate. But what we can do is change lighting cues or change a camera position. Um, and that will work out pretty well. 
focus seems a little off. I'm just going to kind of do it by hand here. Uh, something like this. They're hard to tell. They're not as sharp as the metahumans, but that's in focus for her. I'm going to hit enter again and then leave. And we have our two shots. And if we click between them, we'll be able to transition uh, between these two uh, shots. But I'm going to go back in the camera. I'm going to hit tab. And then using J and L, we're going to be able to do our camera move uh, in our new set. I actually like how this set turned out with the green. It's uh, it's not too bad here. The one last thing I'd like to show um, while we're here uh, before we end this uh, tutorial is that if you want to change how much ambient light is in the scene, we're going to go to environment mode. We're going to go to stage space lights. And now we can turn the dimmer all the way off. This will get very dark. Uh, this is perhaps how we would start to approach night. Um, the light outside the window maybe doesn't make sense in that case. But if you want to eliminate the ambient light in the scene, that is how we do it. Um, however, when you're working, you probably want to keep it up so you can see what's going on. And maybe it's just somewhere um, in the middle. And you don't have to light everything by hand with light sources. That's a little expensive. Um, so we get a slightly different look as we modify the space lights. And if you haven't seen, it is actually possible to give them color as well. So this is getting a little bit out there. It depends on like how you want to previs your scene. Uh, if you want to add these lights yourself, or you just want like a little bit of like blue ambient for some reason, this is one way to achieve that. I generally just keep them white and use them when I'm working. And if it's a night scene, I turn them off for the most part. But I uh, just wanted to show that that is the intended workflow uh, in Cinetracer 2 using the new editor mode for building sets and the current state of lighting, the shot list, and all of that. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback uh, on this editor update, and we'd love to see work that you produce with it on Instagram. If you tag at Cinetracer, I'd be very happy to check it out and share it. I will see you on the next video.